Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. This is a new year, 2023, and I had already pre-prepped this stuff. This is going to be my calendar for 2023. Uh, I think I did a video a while back about these. I can't remember, but I prepped these in 2022 about three or four months ago and decided that I would use these for my daily things, daily journals. And then I saw a better idea and I've been vacillating back and forth between the two, which one to use. This one's prepped and ready to go. The other one I would have to do stuff to. So I might use this one with elements and ideas from the other one that I saw. So this is going to be my base. There are 12 here, and I, I like to live in, a live in a calendar where I get 12 months at once because I don't want to take this out and only see the month of January when I have a doctor's appointment in April. It, it does not serve me well to do it that way because if I have to plan way in advance, what am I going to write it in? Yes, I'll have to go dig for these and doodah. And I, listen, <laughs> I'm not about fooling around with silly, silliness like that. So... I went ahead and did all 12. I think these are considered to be a sixes. I can't remember. They, they are five by seven, basically. And then I put these away after I got done fooling around with them. But I didn't know how to put them together. So this morning it finally came to me how I want to put my calendar together. Now, you're going to look at it and go, oh my God, it's so ugly. It is. And... I don't really care. <laughs> it's because I'm recycling something that I like, but I will decorate it some other time. Right now, I just want to get my, my um, 2023 stuff done so that I can go ahead and start putting doctor's appointments and obligations in here that I know are in the future that if I don't write them down, I'm going to forget them. Like people's birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions, that kind of thing. So I need to get this done. So this is what I've come up with. This will be my new cover. <laughs> yep, it's exactly what you think it is. It's an Ulfa mat that I've decided has lived its time. I do have this one. And then I have smaller versions like the other half of this one. See, it's... You know, I have the other half of this one cut into smaller pieces, so when I need to just make a quick little slit, and this isn't on here, I drag out the little bitty one. Don't need this big one. And so I decided that it will serve me well to be used, so I'm going to cut it up today. And um, while I was having my breakfast this morning, <laughs> I wrote it on the napkin before I forgot, that this needs to be cut into two pieces that are 7.5 by 5.5 because... My uh, my little booklets are seven by five, or five by seven, and I'm going to do the Coptic stitch on all of these because I, I had thought about making like a three piece book and then just rubber banding them in so I could use this over again. The only problem is, is where am I going to put the stuff I've taken out? I'm going to need another cover, so I figured that. Temporary is not what I need. I just need to sew my stuff in something where I don't have to do a lot of fussy, fussy gluing and all that mess with it. So I'm going to cut this into a seven and a half by five and a half, two of them, and then I'm going to put three holes in each side because I decided since this has three holes here. I might as well just do my Coptic in the holes that are already there. Why do I need to make more new holes? I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Coptic in the same exact holes that are in here. I don't need it to be stable at the top or the bottom. I don't have short pieces that are sewn in here. All the pages are exactly the same size. So let me get this into the paper cutter and see how my paper cutter cuts this. If it doesn't work well, or I think, I, I might trim the edge here to do it as a test. And then I will um, 
see how it works. If it doesn't work well with the paper cutter doing this, then I will cut it using, ta-da, one of these. Yep, that's it. Nothing fancy. I don't want to fool around with this for too long because I want to get into my calendar and I've already, like today's the 2nd of January, so I've missed two days of writing stuff down. Look at the shadows. And I have like 7,000 lights on. Um, I've already got two days that I haven't done any, written anything down or put any artwork in or doodling or anything. So I want to get this done today. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. All right, let me go cut this real quick. Well, guess what? Didn't go well. <laughs> So, I'm going to need to do some cutting with my cutter because I tried the paper cutter that cuts like, you know, a million sheets at once. And all it did was make a very tiny line. There's no cut through to the other side. You can see where it tried down this way and it did not succeed. Well, no, it did not. All right, so I'm going to take this and do, bum, bum, bum. I need to do it this way first. I'm going to do a quarter of an inch. Hmm. Which is about what this yellow strip is down the side. So what I need to do is line this up and then just give it all I got. I think maybe, let me snap this blade off and try a fresher blade because I've been using this one a while and I don't think, and I know you can do it with the lid, but I'm really in a hurry. I don't have time to fool with it. I put this back down in here a little bit more. Let's see how we do now. All right, so we're gonna try to go right down this yellow strip here. Kind of disappointed my paper cutter didn't whack through this stuff, but evidently it really means it's a paper cutter. <laughs> I don't even know if this is gonna cut through here or not because this is a self-healing mat and I am wondering if it'll even work at all. I might have to resort to, yep. That's not going to work. Well, it does work. Oh, look at that. It kind of split. Hey, I'm shocked. All right, let's go down the yellow line again. I'm very surprised that it, since it's a self-healing mat, I wouldn't have thought. Yep, look at that. Son of a gun. All right, so I'll tell you how to cut this this small in the first place. I used Tim Holtz scissors to cut this up with. I did not use a box cutter, and I did not use a paper cutter. Second one went a whole lot quicker than the first one did. All right, I need to mark. My seven and a half, so I'm going to cut. It's even with that. I'm going to cut my books at seven and a half. And if I can read this quilters thing here, this is seven and a half right there. So that's seven to eight and half of that, seven and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna do that down here because I only want seven and a half inches for the height. And the width will be five and a half. Okay, seven and a half. Again, I'm gonna shut the camera off while I do this because it's gonna take about 20 or 30 times to get it to cut. 
So I got seven and a half, and after I scored it, I thought, well, let me see if it'll do like cardboard. So what I did, I did 10 or 15 times most of the way down, and then I bent it, and it just popped right off. So that's good to know. All right, so it's seven and a half, and I need five and a half. Well, as you can see, it's too large, so I think I will increase this cut. Since it's going to be a Coptic book, I will need to see how far this, is, how off this is. So I don't want to cut the second one wrong, so let me see what this is. I have a feeling it's about it's not a half inch off. Well, yeah, it's a half inch off. Hmm. So, let me measure this. It's five inches and I thought if I did five and a half, nope, gonna do a quarter of an inch off. Maybe I could make, extend it an eighth of an inch past Let's do That was very quick. All right, let's see what we have here. Okay, this is plenty so I don't scuff up this. But I do need to make the adjustment on the bottom. So we will do another cut here. Let's take a look. I bet you anything, it's a half an inch. <laughs> All right, so I think what I would like to do is a quarter of an inch off the bottom. So it gives me an eighth at the top and an eighth at the bottom. Okay, boy, am I building up some muscles. I think that will do it. Because if this gets pushed to the outside from doing the Coptic stitch, it might get pushed a wee bit forward. I don't know. It's more straight than it was, but I see that it is not as straight as I would like for it to be. Because I have a feeling this part's not straight either. But you know what? I think maybe I'll leave it the way it is. And so I'm going to replicate the mistake on this one. <laughs> okay, if you could only see how my muscles are bulging on my arms, you would be so impressed. <laughs> all right, so I did get all of it cut, and I left a little more than an eighth of an inch on the outside. The bottom is cut much nicer, I think, than the top is, but I'm not going to cut any more off of it for fear that I will make it worse and not better. So you know when to say when, right? All right, so I'm going to take a look at this and I'm going to mark these on here and then I'm going to see if this will make the holes. I am not assured it will work, but I'm going to give it a try. You know, you never learn anything unless you fail the first couple of times and then after that you learn a whole lot more. All right, so... Let me take my little Posca pen here and mark the
Oh, look at that. <gasps> oh, I'm going to faint. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right, let me line the tooth mark again up with the top line of the Posca. I cannot believe it worked. I am so shocked. Hmm. Okay, I didn't use my handheld because I really didn't think it was going to work. Let's put this here and look at that. Oh, the shadow. Sorry, folks. It worked. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah! Oh, phooey. I only did one side. <laughs> no wonder it worked. What a goober. Okay. All right, so I'm going to clip these two together. And then I'm going to have to repeat the process again. I think I've shown this in the past, how I store my eyelets. Yes, there's a stinking glare, but here's how I store them all. I don't have that many. Uh, somebody gifted me some. I bought some. So what I've decided to use are these really big ones because this is a larger size hole. And I think that this would be better than trying to get those little itty bitties in there. Now, I don't have much luck doing it with this thing. I just suck at it and I'm not really sure it's going to work but if we don't try we won't know so since this is a larger hole yep fits let's try one <laughs> and let us see how it goes I don't know which way you're supposed to do this right side up upside down I have no earthly idea so since I have no idea what I'm doing let's be consistent and continue on uh -huh. and then do this there we go. Okay, I just am very leery about this. I don't, I'm not really sure. I think maybe this one needs to do, it needs to be this one. And then this one. There we go. So I used the two silver ones. Oh, I forgot these were in there, the, the ones from the other punch. All right, let us try. Let me move this out of the way. All I need is one more obstruction to screw me up, right? Okay, I can see that it fits. <gasps> Miracle of all miracles. Son of a gun, it worked! Ah, I'm so happy. I did an order, I think I talked about this last year already. I did an order for um, waxed threads and it came in some fabulous colors. Look at this, teal blue, I mean, come on. Yellow, navy blue, which I've already used. And this one, 
that's a variegated. I love it. So I'm trying to decide what color I want to use on my book. Now my butterflies are orange and black. So maybe to honor the butterflies, I'll use this color, although it's not going to look great with the cover, but pfft, look at the cover. <laughs> Maybe I'll use this. This is not as thick as I would like it, so I might double my thread. I'm not really sure. I have some very thick linen, the stuff from Lineco. Not Lineco, this is um, linen, but it's not wax. It's unwaxed linen. This is thinner. The wax stuff I have, the, the orange is thinner than this stuff, or maybe it's about the same size. I can't tell. It's hard looking at it in person. Let me see. Even in person, sometimes it's hard to, to know. Oh, the stuff is thicker. So, not sure what to do. I don't know if doubling this up is going to be a nightmare sewing it. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. I love the wax on it. I love the fact that it's waxed and it will go through the paper like a champ. If I wax this, it'll go through the paper. And I've got to live with it for a year. I'm not crazy about just the plain color because I really wanted to use the orange. <laughs> All right, I'm going with this because the book has got to endure for a year. <laughs> Nothing like people who can't make up their mind. I really want this to be more bulky, thicker. Well, this will stick on itself because waxed. Well, maybe not. You know what? Let me just go with the this and pray that <laughs> pray that it works. <laughs> All right, let's sew. This one though looks like a good candidate. Is it sharp? Yeah. Oh yes. Okay, so we'll try this one. This one doesn't look as deadly as the other one, although it probably will make a big hole in my stuff, but we'll see. Okay, so the, enough of that. All right, so I know where the top is. I know where the bottom is because I've already put stuff in here. Let's find the middle. Dun, da, da, da. Come on. There we go, there's the middle. So, oh yeah, it's gonna make a honking hole. Okay, well, that's the way it goes. It's my choice, so. I am gonna tie a knot in it. I don't usually do that, but since I'm the only one using these journals. Oh, I forgot to run it through the wax. Stinkers. Okay, so there's that. Now we have to thread the needle again as soon as we find it. Alrighty. There we go. This isn't really coated very well with the wa uh, beeswax, but it's enough. So I have this. We're going to go through here. And we're going to loop it around. And as much as I'd like to pull really tight, 
I don't think that's a great idea. Although it needs to not be as loosey-goosey as it is right now. Come on. Okay, I don't like how loose it is, so I'm going to tighten it up just a hair. I also don't want it so tight that I have no flexibility in opening and closing this thing once I fill it up. All right, come on. I did see somebody do a knot here. I don't know why the knot is necessary to tie through here like this. Okay, that's enough. And then back through the hole where the big huge knot is. And here we go. Out this one. And I just have to move this knot so I make sure I see the hole. We got it. Okay, twice now my camera has cut me off and filled up the card, so I had to take the card out, uh, transfer stuff, copy stuff to the card, take the card out, and then delete what's on the car on the camera. It's a bit of a nuisance, but, you know, they are long videos. All right, so I've just continued on while everything was loading, and I've got the second signature booklet thingy in here, and I'm just going to keep going because I have 12 and I'm not going to record me doing all 12 of these because honestly it's tad boring and I'm sure you don't want to see me do the same thing over and over and fighting with the thread so I'm going to um, go ahead and finish this and then I will come back and show you the completed project whenever it's finished this might take me an hour or more maybe half an hour to finish it. And it is loose because I want it to be loose enough that if I glue anything on the pages, I will accommodate that expansion. All right, it's time for the third signature, so let me carry on and I'll be back as soon as I'm finished. Okay, everybody, I finished sewing my book together and as you can see, <laughs> it's already got a problem. <laughs> it's um very wobbly. But I'm going to live in it for a couple months and see how it goes. And then if I don't, I'm sorry, I have a dog wanting attention. It's okay, sweetie. Um, I'm going to live in it. And then maybe at the end of the year, I will rip it out and I will re-sew it so that it <laughs> can expand. <laughs> That's what I need, something that expands <laughs> besides my waistline. So there it is. There is my Ulfa calendar book thingy <laughs> for 2023. We all done. Yay. All right, so what I might do now, although, I don't know, maybe I should leave this the way it is and just put 2023 thing here and just leave this the way it is because I kind of like the way it looks. I like it's grungy. It speaks well of that the Ulfa mat was used and used and used and used and painted and scrubbed and glued and pinned and poked, poked holes in it. And this is it. Yes, this is a very thick book. 
no, I will not be carrying this around in my purse. I have a smaller, um, a smaller traveler's, this one right here. I use this one a lot to carry in my purse. And then I have another one that's out of pleather that I made um, five years ago. And I rotate between using those in my purse because some of them have swatches. Some of them have, um, I don't think this one has it. I had uh, tape in it. These are ideas, uh, notes, things that I might need to take with me to the store. Like if I'm looking for a certain lot number of a thing of yarn, I'll write it down in here and then put this in my purse and take it with me when I go to uh, Joann's to look for yarn. Um, so that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this year there will be a lot of bookmaking. So if you're a person who likes to watch books being made, um, I hope that this will be your channel to to uh, play around please be experimental what's the point of trying to learn new stuff if you don't stick your neck out every now and then and do something you know on the wild side so this is it for me my coptic ulfa 2023 calendar is now done all right y'all see you in the next video bye